So, uh, thank you very much, Luke, for this interview. Thank you again uh, to to do these interviews for our French MMA fans. So, uh, how do you feel today? Feel good today. It's uh, Saturday. I'm just resting for the weekend. I'm trying to take advantage of my off time and uh, yeah. you know, so I can feel fresh and get my last, you know, a few hard days. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are going to be like, uh, you know, three real hard days for me, and then I'll start tapering off Thursday and Friday. So I'm, uh, I'm taking advantage of these these last few days as best I can. So uh, I've seen that you had a, a nice uh, April Fool, right? <laughs> People are. Loving that April Fool's joke, isn't? Aren't they? Jesus. <laughs> Can you tell us the story? Because maybe in France, you know, nobody uh, uh, hear about it. Maybe. Um. Yeah, it's crazy. I can't believe how how big that got. Uh, I uh, I I brought in a friend of mine to do some videography, and he works for BJ Penn and a couple things, and so he's doing some uh, some build up build up for the fight, and doing a lot of social media. Um, unbeknownst to me, he and BJ Penn decided to pull a prank on me, <laughs> and uh, they uh, they work the angle to uh, post you know April Fool's joke and, and make it look like Machida's injured. Uh, it wasn't even; it was like the thirty first. It was the night. It was like it was like ten <laughs> o'clock at night, and he comes in. You know, he goes outside to his car and he comes back in. He's like, "Oh my God, did you see the news?" He's, 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 you know, I'm like, "What? What the hell are you talking about?" And he's trying to play it off, and uh, and then he has me pull up. You know, he's all check out bjpin.com, and I go to it. And of course, the headline's there, and I'm like, I start freaking out. And he's like trying, he's like trying to keep me cool, and I'm like, I just, my wheels are turning. I was like about to call Dana. And, And then he starts playing it off, but uh, yeah, it was it was, uh, it was a cruel joke. And for how long um, uh, does he, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, keep? Uh, how can I say? Keep, you know, oh, uh, keep keep selling it. Yeah. Keep selling it. Yeah. For how long it was? I, I don't know. Five minutes, ten minutes, well, not, or one not, hour. And, and no, no, no. Uh, he couldn't let it hang too long because I was literally on the phone within seconds to call Dana White. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I wanted to know right away. I mean, it must have. I I was looking around, like trying to like verify the information, you know, before I would call him. And uh, but it was no more than like a couple minutes because I started to freak out. And, you know, <laughs> of course. Take calls. So yeah, your your next fight will be against uh, Lyoto Machida uh, for the main event of the UFC on Fox 15 uh, in Newark, uh, New Jersey, on April uh, the 18th. Um, yeah. Is it a good matchup for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a great matchup for me. I, I'm excited to go out there and fight Leo Machida. I, you know, this is a it's a great proving ground for me to prove myself as one of the best middleweights in the world and and to get my title shot. I wouldn't couldn't imagine a better opponent to go through than to, to getting that earning that. So um, um, I'm excited to go out there and execute and perform and just. I just want to get in there and dance, you know. Uh, Lyoto's a, you know, he's a high caliber opponent, and I'm excited to get in there and dance with him. You know, it's um, I'm, What? I like fighting. I like fighting, and I like challenging myself, and I, I, I look forward to the challenge. What did you think about um, his two last fights? Uh, the first uh, with uh, Chris Weinman last uh, July, and the last one with uh, Dolaway. Um. His fight with Weidman was, was was that was a pretty epic battle. I mean, he held in there and took took a beating in the first few rounds. And Machida's not a guy that you, he's not going to go away. He's not going to break. He's going to be there fighting to the end. You have to put him away. You have to finish him. Um, he's not going to fade. You know, he comes well prepared, and uh, and he's going to fight. On, you know, he's going to go out on a sword with the shield. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, uh, I. That was that was a great fight. I mean, he obviously proved he has cardio to push a hard five rounds. Um, and but he, but he also showed you know Chris exposed some some areas where I've, we've kind of seen a little bit in the past. But uh, you know he did he did a pretty good game plan of, of executing and, and winning those first three rounds pretty dominantly. Um, so uh, my execution is is similar, but it's 
it's longer and, and it's more to the point i'm gonna try to i believe no one has cardio like me uh, at middleweight division or any division i think i can push five rounds harder than anybody and so you know i, I plan on putting that that same pressure and being more dynamic, of course, with my striking and, and everything I bring to the table, I think I can, I think I can add a, a sharper, more dynamic element than the Chris to add against him, and, and you know, potentially yeah. finish, finish him. So you've had uh, a very good year last year, uh, 2014, three wins uh, streak, and before the limit, your last fight was against uh, Michael Bisping. Uh, you won by submission at the second round last November. Um, yeah. Do you, your plan is to, to finish the fight uh, or it's not your, your goal, you know? My goal is definitely to finish the fight. And that's, that I need to make a statement in this fight and, uh, and I want to build up the next, you know, my title fight with Weidman. I go out there and beat and finish Lyoto Machida. That, that'll speak volumes and that'll be a big sell for the pay-per-view when I fight Weidman who didn't finish him. So, I mean, I'm, I'm always looking to finish. And, uh, you know, I'm happy about this being a five-round fight. I don't have to push the issue. And uh, I can take my time and then, and then find the finish when it comes. Mm -hmm. But I'm definitely, I'm definitely looking to finish Lyoto. You know, I think I'm more dynamic. I, I, I've, I'm more well-rounded. And, uh, you know, I'm just going gonna, gonna to make him think about everything and I'm going to punish him for every mistake. What is the, um, the atmosphere at the AKA... Uh for the last few weeks, you know, after the Daniel, after DC lost uh, his fight against uh, Jones, and h how is the atmosphere right now at the AKA? Atmosphere is great. Everyone's back in the gym on point. I mean, Cormier, obviously, we're bummed about how that went. It could have been a lot better, but it was a learning experience, um, and uh, I think he'll better himself from that. And, and like we always have done as a team, I think we all. Are, are determined to better ourselves. I mean, the guys never lost before. Um, never had never had too much trouble in these fights. So this is a uh, it's something that should drive him a lot, a lot more to get back in the gym. And I, I believe it has. And Kane's back, healthy, getting ready for his title fight. Khabib's working his ass off, uh, getting ready for his big number one contender. And uh, you know he's the uncrowned champion at this point. So uh, I mean, our our gym is high. High as it's ever been, and it's a good, good place to be right now. A lot, yeah. a lot of killers. Yeah, of course. Um, are you surprised the the fact that um, Vitor has uh, his license to to fight uh, Chris Weinman, or or no? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm surprised at this point, but uh, really, whatever. I mean, let's see what he's got. I'm, I'm interested to see what he looks like come fight time and uh, and how he fights, so um, whatever, I mean, guys, guys, guys still a joke in my mind and always will be a lifelong cheater, so whatever, um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see, I'm very curious to see him, very, you know, as clean as he possibly could be, I guess. If, uh, if, every, if everything goes well for you uh, for this fight against Mashida, uh, would you like to, to fight Chris Weinman or Vitor Belfort for the for the for the title? Uh, I think Weidman's gonna beat Vitor, and uh, I definitely am looking forward to fighting for the title. Okay. That's what I want. Yeah. Um, so Chris, okay. I, I'm if if Vitor wins, I'm more than excited to go out there and uh, get my revenge. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I I think Chris is the the better fighter, and you know I foresee us fighting at the end of 2015 in New York City. Yeah. MSG. That's what I'm. That's what I'm putting out there right now. It's, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> why MSG into 2015? It's gonna happen. Let's make it. Okay, I hope for you. Another big battle will occur uh, on the same card uh, in uh, in uh, Newark in the New Jersey. Uh, this fight is uh, Jacare versus uh, Romero. Um, do you think Romero could, could be a danger for uh, a threat for uh, Jacare? I think Romero is a big danger for Jacare. It's a, he's a he's a loose cannon. He's a very athletic. He's got a lot of power. He's not easy to take down. It's not a guy that Jacare can go in there and take down. I mean, we've seen him be susceptible to takedowns, but those are guys that he doesn't give a give a. You there? Yeah. 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 Good. So he's he's given up takedowns to guys he doesn't get care about getting taken down by because he's so worried about getting the knockout. If you saw him when he fought Tim Kennedy. 
Tim Kennedy couldn't get a takedown because he didn't want to go to the ground with Tim Kennedy. He's not going to want to go to the ground with Jacare, so he's going to be a little more cautious on the feet, um, defending the takedowns. And I, I think Yoel is is I favor Yoel in the first half of the fight. Um, second half of the fight, I probably have to favor Jacare, but I'd say a round and a half in, you know, almost, almost two rounds. I it's hard. A lot of people want to say Jacare. I, I I say I know how tough Jacare is, but I. Stylistically, it's it's just a tough match for him. Yoel is, is is dangerous on the feet, but I don't know. It's I got it kind of fifty fifty. All right, okay. Fifty fifty. A half the half, first half to Yoel, second half to Jacare. Whoever takes more of that second round, that's what I'm seeing. All right. Um, Anderson Silva uh, still wants to fight. Uh, he <laughs> he plans to fight uh, again for five more years. Uh, that that's what he said. Uh, what do you think about it? Yeah, all, all steroid guys really believe they can fight forever, right? <laughs> yeah. I said it. I mean, I mean, steroids will make you feel like you can fight forever. So I guess that's what his, uh, where his mindset is. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I'd like to see... I like to see him penalized for, for using steroids. Like they're talking about penalizing everybody and and reinforce, you know, enforcing the <coughs> drug testing and everything and yeah. and putting serious bans on these guys. But you know, as we already seen with Hector Lombard, he only got a one year suspension, which is pretty standard what it's always been. Um, I think they need to get into the two and and I I like four years. I mean, let's let's really deter these guys from using steroids and cheating. Mm. I think two years is, is is I mean a lot of these guys could risk two years of their you know their career to to make a, a, a career for themselves you know I mean yeah if this is the only way they believe they can do it four years you you can put a four year ban on a guy for doing steroids that's a big portion of his of his career and yeah. they're gonna really think twice about you know using so I mean that's I, I I believe that's that uh I mean back to Anderson yeah I I don't. Uh, let's see what the punishment is. I mean, really, uh, I just don't see him fighting at the level he was. Yeah. I don't know what he, what kind of fights he's looking for. What I mean, how how his head's at, but he didn't look like Anderson yeah. last I saw. Yeah, I agree. Even even with the steroids, I mean, he didn't have the confidence in the, you know. So I I don't I don't see how he could potentially fight that long. Um, a big clean. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one question. What is your green beverage? <laughs> the, what was that? The green uh, beverage that you that you had uh, at the beginning of the interview. It's like kale and uh, green. Uh... Uh, yeah, uh, it's just a little smoothie I, I put together. I had a little, little ahi tuna. Okay. And then I, uh, I mixed in uh, some papaya. Uh, it was kale. There was yeah. some kale in there. As my greens, um, blueberries, um, coconut water, and uh, what else did I have? Blueberries, papaya, coconut nice. water, and kale. I think that was it. Um, I'm sure that you that you do salad, things. fruit, and protein. Get my yeah. get my fruit food groups in. I gotta have like small little meals that are gonna go through my body and recover for the weekend because I'm not working out too much. Okay. Um, what did you think about um, Jose Aldo and Conor McGregor uh, World Tour? You know the the, the media thing, and uh, do you think uh, Conor um, has gone too far? You know. Ah, uh, Conor. I mean, has he gone too far? Did DC and John Jones go too far? A lot of people say yes, but then the public fucking buys it all up, and then they yeah. go out there and and then money talks. I mean. Jose Aldo might think he's going too far right now, but when he gets his pay-per-view check, he's going to be a happy man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right. Um, so thank you very much for this interview. Uh, again, uh, Luke, uh, it's always a pleasure to have you and uh, wish you the best for this fight uh, uh, against Lyoto Machida. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys after. Yeah. Peace. See you. Mm -hmm.